Well, the best film I've ever seen about Hollywood by far is The Bad and the Beautiful. Oh, yeah? I think that's an absolutely great film that's as honest today about how the Hollywood system works, I mean, under the radar, mm. as, uh, and I think it, the performances what, are great. What do, you, what do you admire about it? What does it have to say that's so different? Well, there's so many, first of all, it, it, it's the Kirk Douglas character, who's the lead, who plays a, a producer very much in, in the mold of somebody, um, you, you know, the legendary producers. And it deals with how he got to be who he was, and that was by, backbiting his partners and by uh, using people uh, and, um, and, and then discarding them. But uh, he happened to be brilliant. He also happened to be a genius producer and he got the best out of people. He, uh, he would, uh, the Lana Turner character was a bad drunk and she thought she was in love with him. Um, but he didn't love her, and yet he, he forced her to give a performance that put her on top. So it was about the thin line between good and evil that exists in people like that, like Zanuck and Selznick. These were tough guys, but they knew their business. They knew their business in ways that the people who run the studios today don't. Those guys were real producers, and the guy in... Um, the Kirk Douglas character in The Bad and the Beautiful is a filmmaker who winds up running a studio and then losing it, and then he has to go back to all these people whose careers he affected so profoundly. That's what's significant about that movie. They all hate him, but at but, the end of the movie, they all come back to work for him. Or they're, they're, they may. Yeah. You know, it ends it on the telephone where they're all to. listening yeah. to him yeah. because he knew his stuff. And the guys who built the city as film directors, they started often as prop men, like John Ford was a prop man, and so many of the other filmmakers that didn't come over from Europe, but that were local. They knew the business from the ground up before they became directors and producers. Mm -hmm. And I think The Bad and the Beautiful reflects that. Mm -hmm. Also, there's this incredible uh, passage in it that I learned a great deal from um, about the use, uh, about how to make a low budget horror film like, like the, the Val Luton films. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And there's this one scene. There's a lot of Val Luton in there. There's a lot right. of Val Luton. And it, they make a, they're making a film within this film, and uh, it's going to be a cheap horror film. And the, uh, the prop man and the makeup artist bring them a lousy. A gorilla suit or a monster suit, and it looks awful. And the and the Kirk Douglas character looks at it, and he and the director, played by Barry Sullivan, they sit around. They're depressed, and then Douglas says, "What is the most frightening thing to an audience?" And the other guy says, "The dark, darkness." He says, "Not showing the monster, but keeping the." monster hidden in the dark. And he illustrates that. He turns off all the lights and he shines. You just see one light and you see his face and you realize that they could, and they discover that by not showing a stupid um, a gorilla mask, they could frighten people even more. And, and I think that's the best lesson I've ever seen about what makes a successful horror film. The retention of the, the monster. The monster that's in people's minds, it's why radio was such an effective medium, dramatic radio. The most frightening stuff I remember as a kid was listening to Inner Sanctum and Suspense and these great radio actors and sound effects. You never saw it. You never saw the monster or the killer except in your mind's eye. And that's illustrated in that film, The Bad and the Beautiful. Mm -hmm.